Hi everybody, welcome to another video in statistics, chapter 9, estimating the values of a parameter. A parameter is a values of the population. Statistic is a values of a sample. So the idea of statistic is that we can gather a sample and with that we do some calculation. We get a statistic for a sample and then we will estimate what will be the values for the whole population. So this is very important and uh, have a lot of practical application. For example, before any uh, election, there's a poll. A poll will be it's just a sample of, let's say, 6,000 people. And with that, uh, we estimate how many of them vote some certain ways. And then with that, uh, the result from a sample, we try to uh, estimate the result for the population and uh, if you're watching the news usually during the election uh, they said uh, based on the poll the, some certain people will vote some certain way with the margin of error of some and some yes that's exactly what we uh, study in this particular section uh, section 9.1 estimating the population proportion so again we will estimate for the population which we don't know, so that's why we have to estimate. And what we do know is the statistic, which is of a sample. Right, so first, uh, point estimate. Uh, point estimate is the values of a statistic, which is of a sample, that estimate the values of parameter. So a point estimate, so we use a statistic that estimate a parameter. A statistic is of a sample. A parameters is of a population uh, for example the point estimate of the population proportion is P equal X over N where X is the number of individual in the sample and N is the sample size so N is the sample size X will be in the sample with a specified characteristic and the point estimate is x over n right and the p hat here is the population proportion that is the estimate of the population proportion so that is the p hat that p hat is the estimate for the point estimate for the population proportion right let's look at an example here in July of 2008, uh, Quinnipiac University poll asked 1,783 registered voters nationwide, nationwide uh, whether they favor uh, a death penalty of convicted murder. Right. And 1,123 were in favor. So I obtained a poll estimate for the proportion. Of course, that for the population. That is the p hat. Is equal to x over n. So in this case, n is the sample size. Which is this. And that is 1783. And um, this number in favor, and we want the proportion who in favor. So x will be equal to 1,123. So we have 1,123 divided by 1,783. Yeah. Of course, if we want to, we can estimate, uh, write that as a percent. That about 63%. So, 
uh, so we can only add 1783 so that is a sample and we use this to estimate the whole population and the population here will be uh, the register voters nationwide All right uh, next example uh, when 183 uh, junior college student was surveyed so that is n the sample size and then 170 said that they have previously owned a motorcycle so the x is the number of individuals that has some characteristic in this case that characteristic is previously owned a motorcycle All right and then the, of course uh, the point estimate for p the population proportion which is the p hat point estimate for the population proportion equal to x over n So we have about 44 percent. Right. So that just point estimate one uh, estimate just one number. Now uh, the confidence interval for the population proportion. Now this is uh, would be a better information. So, so this is where I said it was the news on the election, for example, when they said uh, a survey said. Uh, certain percentage will vote certain way with the margin of error of something so that's what we're talking about so we want uh, because between what we have in the sample and what we have in the population uh, there's certainly some difference between a statistic of the sample and the parameter of the population so uh, we should be able to give that information so we have the better idea of uh, what we have how good uh, or not how uh, estimation is All right so there are quite a few uh, terminology here confident interval the confident interval for Bernoulli parameters consists of interval of numbers based on the point estimate so when we say let's say it, uh, if we say it, uh, 40 percent of the population will vote certain weight with margin of error is two percent so 40 percent with the margin error of two percent, meaning uh, could be maybe two more percent or two less percent, so it could be thirty-eight percent to forty-two percent in that case. So in that case, thirty-eight percent to forty-two percent is a confident interval. So there is some uh, range to estimate. All right, the level of confidence represent the expected proportion of the interval that will contain the parameter. If large number of different samples is obtained, the level of confidence is denoted one minus alpha one hundred percent. Right. So let's say when I previously I said uh, between thirty eight percent to forty two percent. When we say that, we should be able to we should give out the actual how confident we are about that. So for example, I can say I'm a hundred percent certain that. Uh, the percent to vote some certain way is between 0% to 100%, but that doesn't tell much, right? Because most, that always is between 0% to 100%, that for, for, for sure. So if you have 100% confident about that, that doesn't tell much. However, rather, if you say you have 90% confident that uh, the proportion will be in certain number, that would be better. So usually uh, the level of confidence is given in the 1 minus alpha uh, times 100%. So like said, 95% confident. In that case, alpha would be 0 0.05. And 95% confident meaning that one different confidence interval are constructed. It based on the same for the same proportion. We will expect 95 of the interval con con to contain the parameter and 5 not include in the parameters. So, 
for example, if I said 95% uh, we work the result 95% confident that it is between 38% and 42%. That means if I repeat that uh, type of question 100 times, if I do the survey 100 times, 95% of them will have the result between 38 and 42%. That the 95% confident interval is about. It says that if we do that 100 times more, 95% uh, of those 100 times uh, will be the statistic or the investigative estimate will fall within that uh, confident interval. Right. Uh, confident interval estimate for the population proportion is in the form uh, point estimate plus or minus margin of error. We talk about that. For example, if the point estimate is 40% and then margin of error is 2%, meaning that it could be 2% more or 2% less and uh, that gives us 38% to 42% for the confident interval. All right. And then the, uh, the level of confidence. By the way, what we call the alpha is called the level of confidence. is the alpha and uh, I'm sorry that is rather confusing let me just give an example here right so we say 95% uh, level of confidence Of course, that given in the form of 1 minus alpha, 100%. If you say 95% of, sorry, uh, if you say 1 minus alpha or 9 times 100%, so 95% level of confidence, that corresponding to alpha equal to 5%, or we say 0 0.05, and alpha is called level of significant So 95% uh, level of confidence corresponding to 5% of level of significance. Right. Of course, the more confident we are, the bigger the interval. The less confident we are, the smaller the interval. Like I said, 100% sure that it will be between 0 and 100%. That, of course, I'm 100% confident about that. Because that doesn't tell much. But uh, the smaller interval, The smaller interval uh, usually corresponding to uh, the less confident. But if we want to increase uh, the level of significant, or if we want to increase uh, the decrease the margin of error, we increase the sample size. Uh, the sample size sample uh, samples increases. The size of sample increases the margin of error decreases. Uh, level of confidence increases, the margin of error also increases. So, if we want the bigger range of numbers, then we're more confident about that. I'm 100% confident that it will be between 0 and 100%, like that. Very big uh, level of confidence, 100% for very big range uh, estimate right so of course the better uh, way to reduce the margin of error is to ask more people the bigger the sample size the better estimate is always uh, standard deviation of population the more spread there is in the population the wider spread will be in the level of confidence All right here some calculation uh, for example for a simple random sample of size n, the sampling distribution of p hat, which is the population proportion, is approximately normal with the mean equal to the. Okay. So we talk here is the mean 
of the population proportion is equal to p. And what is p? And then the standard deviation is that. So p hat here is the approximation of the population proportion. We don't know that. And provided that n p times 1 minus p is greater than or equal to 10. Or we can also uh, require that the trial will be independent or the sample size is 0 0.05 uh, less than n. So, of course, uh, the p hat is what uh, we don't know, but uh, the p is what we can get uh, from the number, uh, from the problem. Uh, we'll see. All right. Uh, interpretation of confident interval. This is what we said before. Uh, a 1 minus alpha, 100% confident interval indicate that 1 minus alpha, 100% of all simple random of size n for the population whose parameter is unknown will result in that. So for example, if we said it is between 38% to 42% with 95% confident interval, meaning that if I take in that the sample size, let's say if I survey a thousand people come up with between 38 and 42%, then it says that if you ask, if you do all of the sample size of 1000, so if you ask all different combination of 1,000 people, uh, the confidence interval will be that much percent of the population uh, of that sample that you choose uh, will fall within, within that parameters. I will give more uh, example in that uh, particular case. But once again, the p hat is the, po uh, the population proportion, which we don't know. So we estimate that. So because we don't know that, uh, we just use p hat instead of p. And uh, this is what we come up with, the confident interval. All right. We'll see when we get to some uh, calculation later. And uh, z alpha over 2 times that will be the margin of error. All right. Let's see how it works. Before that, let's focus on the z alpha over 2. This is called the critical values. Which correspond to the level uh, level confidence or level significance. Right. If we say level confidence of 88%, meaning if we want 88%, if we want 88% in the middle, What will be the z here? Of course, this being symmetric, this will be negative z alpha over 2. So 88% in the middle, meaning that 12% on the, the tail end, right? So this put together 12%, uh, so we say 6% each. And put them together, in this case, alpha, the level of significance is uh, 0 0.12 or 12%. And we just need to find this z, which is very easy. Uh, on the previous section, second uh, variable go to distribution, we just go to inverse normal and area. Right. The only problem here is it we have to give the area from the left. Okay, so if it's 88%, meaning that from the left side of z alpha over 2, there's 6% and 88%. So this will be inverse normal. Of, of 6 and 88, so that is 94%. 0 0.94 uh, where the mean is 0, standard deviation is 1, all right? 
So that gives us 1.55. Um, so just a reminder, when we do the inverse normal, we have to put the area from the left of it. Because this is pretty much like what we have in the previous uh, chapter. So I'm going to put 88% plus 6%. Uh, zero and one the mean and standard deviation or just inverse normal of 94 uh, 0 0.94 0 and 1 and we have 1.55 that uh, another five All right. now the, uh, another way to check this is uh, we will calculate the normal CDF Uh, we go from the lower values of, uh, remember this is symmetric, if you want this side that's negative 1.555, go to 1.555 and compute, we have about 88%, which is good. So 88% in the middle corresponding to the Z values of 1.555 on the right and negative 1.555 on the left. Alright, so that based on the level of confidence. Uh, the next one is based on the level significant. So this one level significant is alpha, which is 0 So we have 0 0.1, uh, that level significant, which is on the tails. So meaning that each side, we have to be half of that. Right? So 0 0.1 divided by 2 is 0 0.05. That will be on each side. 0 0.05 here and 0 0.05 here. Now, if it is 0 0.1 on the tails, that means uh, we have the level confident 1 minus alpha, 1 minus 0 0.1, which is 0 0.9. So we say 90% in the middle. So level of confidence is 90% in the middle. But if we want to find the Z, divide alpha uh, divided by 2, the critical values, on that side and on that the other side is negative so that is the inverse normal I have 90% here and 5% there or if we want to we can just say right on the on the right side is 5% the other side have to be 95% right 0 0.05 plus 0 0.9 is 0 0.95 0 and 1. Second variable, inverse normal, 0 0.95 and calculate, yeah, so 1.645. And the other one is negative, 1.645. Right, if uh, you use uh, the stat crunch, uh, go to uh, stat, sorry, calculate a normal, right? The mean zero and one, that's okay. And let's say we want the area on the left at uh, 0 0.95. And when we compute, that gives us 1.645, which is that Z on this side. Of course, if we want only 5% on the left of it, that will give us the negative 1.645, because that on the left side of it will be 5%. Right.
uh, so that's why we use start crunch once again uh, go to start uh, calculators normal right Right. Next, uh, in July 2008, uh, Queenie Pack took so pretty much the same from now obtain a 90% confidence interval for the proportion of the rest of voters nationwide who favor that. Okay, all that. So 90% confidence interval. So a few things uh, to say here. Uh, to summarize, in this case, we have n is equal to. 1783 and then x is 1123 with that we can calculate the point estimate for the population proportion That I'm just going to write uh, zero point six two nine eight. Right. So that is just one number to estimate for the whole population. Right. Now we want ninety percent confident interval. Uh, so first, we have to find out what is the z of alpha over two. So ninety percent confident interval. Ninety percent. Of course, if ninety percent in the middle, that means ten percent on the other either side. So five percent on this side, and five percent on the other side. And exactly like what we did earlier, to get the z alpha over two. Uh, we do the inverse normal. Of all the area on the left of it, uh, mean standard deviation, and we should get 1.645. Still the same thing. All right, so that's what we have so far. Now, next we need to calculate um, the mean and the standard deviation. Right. So for the population, so uh, the mean. Since we don't know, we just have to use the best estimate we have is that, which is equal to 0 0.6298 and standard deviation. I'm just going to copy that. But like I said, since we don't know P, we just have to use P hat. Uh, P hat, 1 minus P hat over N. Right, P hat is that. One minus p hat divided by n seventeen eighty three. Right, I'm just enter everything at once. Alpha, I'm sorry, uh, square root. Uh, we just say we have 0 0.6298. It's actually better to just keep the number we have earlier. We can just use that. 
10 times 1 minus I go up there highlight that like copy and paste and then divide by 1783 all right so that's what we have 0 0.1143 uh, let's just say 0 0.011 4 all right four decimal places Right, and then next in the formula we have this. Right, so where was that formula? Uh, where's that formula coming from? Well, uh, let me derive that quickly. So remember uh, the z score, right? The z is equal to x minus the mean over standard deviation, right? Now, if we want to solve for x, uh, I'll write this over 1 and do the cross multiply. So cross multiply, we have z times sigma equal to 1 times that, which is x minus the mean. Right? So with that, I can plus that on both sides. Uh, add uh, mu on both sides. Uh, so we have x equal mu plus uh, z times sigma. Now, on this uh, example, we have two values, uh, one being positive z alpha over 2 and one negative z alpha over 2. So that's why in this case, if we want to estimate for x, in this case p hat equal to uh, I should not say x, uh, just say mu is p hat uh, plus or minus z alpha over 2 and then sigma, sigma being p hat 1 minus p hat over n. Yeah, so that's exactly what we have here. Right, so back to uh, our calculation. So, uh, the answer confident interval equal to p hat plus or minus z of alpha over 2 times sigma of p hat, which is that. Or in our particular case, uh, it's going to be 0 0.6298 plus or minus the z will be 1.645 times the sigma of p hat 0 0.0114 right so 0 6298 plus 1.645 times 0 0.011 0 0.0114 times 0 0.0114 so we have that that is where we have the plus so if we go up or we type the whole thing again, but this time the minus. So we have that 611. Uh, so the answer will be uh, between six, uh, 0 0.611 and 0 0.64. A5, so let's say 649. Yeah, so this is the interval of number. Right, if we want the margin of error, the margin of error is this. Which I multiply this together. 
So ninety percent confident that uh, the proportion will be between this number and the margin of error will be at that number times the z of alpha over t one point six four five, and we have that zero point zero one eight eight. That is the margin of error. So the estimate plus or minus the margin of error give us the confident interval. Right, so those are the steps. So uh, this will be given from the sample. That's what we know for the sample. We can calculate p hat. Uh, we have to know how do we want uh, the confident interval. If 90%, we can calculate the z alpha over 2. From there, we can calculate the mean and standard deviation and the confident interval. Uh, actually, we don't even have to do that uh, later on. We can just use a calculator. But for now, uh, just get the idea of uh, what we're dealing with. Right. Uh, when 440 junior college students were surveyed, so we have N of 440. And then Tony said they have a passport. That would be X. So with that, we can calculate P hat. Two hundred over four forty. Right, so we have that. Say forty five, forty five. Construct ninety five percent confident interval. So ninety five percent in the in the middle. That means five percent on either tails. So we have two point five percent here and two point five percent here. So if we want the values uh, positive or negative, so inverse normal uh, two point five percent and ninety five percent. So that will be. Uh, ninety-seven point five percent, zero point nine seven five. Mean is zero. Standard deviation is one. So we do that. Second distribution inverse normal of zero point nine seven five. Paste. So we have that. One point nine six. Right, so we have that. Next, uh, we calculate uh, the mean of that, which we don't have to calculate because that is the p hat 45, 45, 0.45, 45. And then we calculate the sigma of p hat, which is p hat. 1 minus p hat divided by n. Right. Another way to type this, uh, we better, let's say earlier we calculate that and then we equal to something, right? So that, whatever the last number is, is drawn to the answer. So what we need to do is now is a square root. We can just copy and paste, but better way it just hit second and that negative sign meaning we get the last answer which is this number then times one minus second answer and then divide by n 
440 students, which is n, right? Yeah, use that instead. So that will, whatever that number is, is going to be in the answer. Second, the negative sign. Right, that give us 0 0.0. Two, three, seven. Right. So similar to previous one, if we want the margin of error, we take that, uh, multiply with the uh, z. Right. The margin of error is z times uh, the standard deviation. times that so we have that standard deviation times I uh, this is the Z alpha over 2 so the margin of error is uh, multiply this to Point zero four six five, and then the confident interval will be uh, the estimate, the point estimate, plus or minus that, right? So confident interval. p hat plus or minus uh, z alpha over 2 times sigma p hat. Uh, so pretty much the p hat, the point estimate, uh, 0 0.4545 plus or minus uh, the margin of error. Right. So I have 0 0.4545 at the point estimate. Uh, plus margin of error is 0 0.501 and if we subtract we'll highlight that and now we subtract and we have uh, 0 0.408 right so that is the confident interval so 95% confident that uh, the proportion will be between these two numbers. Right. The next part of uh, the section is how to cal calculate the sample size. So now that brings to another question. Let's say it, uh, if you want the margin of error to be 2%, then how many that you have to survey, right? So how many we have to ask to achieve uh, the margin of errors that we want? Of course, the more people we ask, the margin of error will be smaller. All right. So the formula for that is uh, if a sample size needed for a sp uh, specified margin of error for a level of confidence is going to be equal to this. If we do know p hat, if we don't know p hat, then we use this, where it is unknown. So, if we know the p hat, we use that. If we don't know the p hat, one minus p hat. This one, if we if we know the p hat, we use that. If not, if we unknown, if it is unknown use replace that by 0 0.25 so the 0 0.25 is the worst case scenarios of this now if you actually graph the function uh, x times 1 minus x and you see the graph I will zoom in so you can see it 
the highest values here is 0 0.25. So 0 0.25 is the worst case scenarios. Of, so the biggest values of p hat times 1 minus p hat is 0 0.25. So if we don't know p hat, we just assume the worst. And that will be 0 0.25. Right, and look at some example here. Uh, so geologists wanted to determine the percent of the resident of American that only speak English at home. Uh, what size sample should be obtained if she wishes her estimate is within 3% point uh, with 90% confident interval? Right, so a few things here. Uh, we have three percent within three percent, so that means the error, the margin of error, is five percent, uh, three percent, or zero point zero three, uh, with ninety five ninety percent confidence. All right, so we know the A here. Next, 90% confident. If it's 90% in the middle, that means 10% on the either side, on either tail. And we did this many times. Inverse normal of zero point ninety five zero comma one. Uh, I think one point six four five. Right, it is ninety percent in the middle. Uh, Z alpha over two one point six four five. Right, so we have that, and that in the formula. The only thing left is p hat. So, uh, assume that she used the estimate obtained from the census supplement. All right. So, previous result is the p hat. In this case, it's known to be uh, 82.4%, so 0 0.824. Right. So, with that, we just put this two back. And we have n equal to p hat, 1 minus p hat. Z alpha over 2 divided by A square. So that's exactly as we see it. So the P hat 0 0.824 times 1 minus 0 0.824 and then Z uh, 1 0.645 divided by 0 0.03 for the margin of error and we square that and we end up with 436.04 so usually we just round up because we cannot have uh, a fraction of a, a person so 437 so the survey C, uh, should ask 437 people. All right, so that is where p hat is known. If p hat is unknown, replace p minus times 1 minus p hat by the 0 0.25. All right, let's look at this example. In a college student poll, uh, it is interesting to estimate the proportion of in favor of changing quality system to semester system. How many should we ask if we want to estimate within 0 0.09? So this is the margin of error. And we use 99% confident interval. If we have 99% in the middle, that 
means we have one percent on each side, right? So one percent on each side meaning uh, zero point five percent. I mean one percent on both sides, so zero point five percent on each tail. So to find the z alpha over two is equal to inverse normal of 99% plus 0 0.5 so 99 plus 0.5 and of course you move the decimal point two to the left so that's 0 0.995 0, 0.1 inverse normal 0 0.995 2.5758 right uh 2.5 right the formula in this case uh we don't do not know p hat so we just have to use this one so n equal to 0 0.25 when p hat is unknown uh, z alpha over 2 divided by e uh, Margin of error square. Zero point two five, and that is the z alpha over two. Margin of error square. Zero point two five times two point five seven six divided by zero point zero nine square so we have 204.8 and I will always round this up to 205 right and then you say wait a minute on the previous example we have what 90% uh, confident interval and if we want that much we have to ask 437 people why now we have even higher confidence and we only ask 2 and 5? Well, the answer to that is uh, because of the margin of error in this case as well. So that's a lot of factors that determine the sample size. Uh, we want, uh, if we want a big margin of error or small margin of error, the smaller the margin of error, um, the more people we have to ask. Right, here's here the summary of uh, what we have uh, in this section. The good the thing is in the calculation, if we hit the stat, go to test, and then choose the option A, one proportion, Z interval, uh, we'll be able to find that exactly as we did before. Right, so let's test that. Right, if we go to one page 119, uh, this is the example we have earlier. Uh, what it says is second distribution, sorry, second stat, never mind, stat, go to test, hit stat, go to test, uh, option A, or whatever I say, one proportion Z interval, use that, uh, X, 200, N, 440, and this is 95% confident interval, right? Calculate. And as you see, this is the confident interval. Right, that's simple enough, right? Now, uh, what if we use stack range? I'll switch real quick. If we use stack range, go to stat and uh, proportion stat one sample with summary so a lot of things here uh, because we estimate the proportion statistic and we only have one sample so uh, we don't have the data we just have the summary right number of success it is 200 that has some certain characteristic our phone and 40 and we will choose the confident interval of 95% 0.95 and then we just compute
and of course you see we have the same result as this, the as we did before using the calculator or by hand right so just like that right now go back to the notes right ti calculator ti 84 stat go to test and option a one proportion z statistic z interval sorry right now we have a lot of examples here uh, in a survey of 2,480 golfers, 15% said they were left-handed. The survey margin of error is 3%. Construct a confident interval, right? So, what are we given here? We have 2,480, that the number of people we survey, that is sample size. 15% uh, said they were left-handed. This guy would not give an X. We give him P hat directly. Sorry, uh, I have to take that form. Anyway, uh, in this case we have N, we have 15% 15 15% uh, 15 said they were left-handed. So this is actually P hat, we are not given X. Uh, the survey margin of error again we're not uh, of course we can calculate uh, the margin of error too actually we cannot because this way we said confident interval we don't even know uh, how confident it is uh, the level of confident so we cannot calculate that what we are given it is e so not much we can do here so, actually, we don't need much either. Uh, the estimate confident interval in this case is the estimate plus or minus the margin of error. Plus or minus 0 0.03. So, plus 3% give us uh, 8.18 and minus. So point one two. So that is the confident interval, All right? Because this one we don't, uh, we're not given much, and didn't ask for much either. So that's what we have. Now, a survey of two thousand four hundred fifty golfers who said that uh, so that two hundred eighty one are left-handed construct ninety eight percent confident interval. So this one we actually are more of a number that we. Uh, it. So n is 2450 and then uh, x 281 of them has some certain characteristic characteristic and then we want 98% confident interval. Yeah just write like that just like in the calculator. Right so if we use a calculator Stat, go to test, option A, one proportion Z interval, and X, 281 out of 2450, 98% uh, confident, how we calculate, right, so the point estimate is this, and the confident interval is 0 0.09972 0 0.12967 right. that's simple enough yeah if we use a calculator that's what we do uh, of course we can use um, we use this to calculate the confident interval as well. Right. Uh, to test the fairness of a coin, uh, Peter tosses 200 times and obtain 95 hats. 
construct 95% confidence for the pop for the proportion or the probability probability when getting hat for tossing that coin. Right. So n is 200. X uh, will be 95 uh, 95 them getting uh, turn hat land on hats. Uh, confident interval. Of 95. Right. This time I'm using I'm using the stat crunch. Right. So once again, stat uh, proportion stats one sample with data. I'm sorry, with summary. Uh, number of success. Then 95 hats out of 200 tosses and confident interval of 95 percent just going to leave that as is uh, and compute we have between these two number six two sorry I have to go back uh, so to, so I just, I'm just going to copy the confident interval here and put that on the note. That's what we have. Right. That's simple if we just use a calculator. But of course, I will show you how to use uh, how to calculate that by hand. Of course, we cannot really calculate everything by hand because the z alpha over two we have to use calculator anyway. Right. Right, uh, research at a major hospital wishes to estimate the proportion of the adult population of U.S. that has high blood pressure. How large the sample size is needed in order to have 95% confidence that will not differ from the true proportion. All right, so uh, will not differ from the true proportion of more than 5%. So this is. Uh, five percent or zero point zero five and the confident uh, interval or confident level uh, ninety five percent how large the sample is so this one asking for the sample size right. so that's all we have uh, what we do not know is the previous Data for P hat we don't know. It's unknown. Right. So I'm go to the summary page. If we do not know the P hat, that's what we use. Right. N equal zero point two five. C alpha over 2 over E square. Right. Uh, we do not know Z alpha over 2. We know E though. Uh, 95%. In the middle. Uh, that means uh, five percent on both tails, which means half of that will be on one tail. Two point five percent on one tail, and the z alpha over two will be right there. Inverse normal. Ninety five plus two point five. So move the decimal two places to the left. Zero point nine seven five. Zero one. 
uh, this will be 1.645 if uh, I remember correctly we've done a, a lot of this second uh, distribution inverse normal 0 0.975 So obviously we haven't done enough. So that is 1.96. Yeah. So just put that in here. Uh, the error, margin of error. Yeah, that. Right. 0 0.25 times 1.96 divided by 0 0.05 square have twin a 4.16 but of course we can always uh, we always round up that give us twin 85 so we should ask uh, the survey should uh, be of uh, twin 85 people Right, next, a researcher wishes to estimate the number of households with two cars, uh, the large sample size, how large the sample size needed. So once again, asking for N, and we have 95% confident interval. And uh, differ from the true proportion by no more than 5%. So that would be margin of error, 5%. Right. In this case, though, we do know a previous study. So this is the previous study of the pro proportion. So we do know P hat. P hat is known. Twenty-two percent. Right. So if we had is known, uh, the formula to find the sample size uh, will be this one. And equal p hat one minus p hat uh, z alpha over two divided by e square. Uh, p hat uh, 1 minus p hat z alpha over 2 well we don't know that but based on the, the same confidence interval of 95 percent do it exactly as we did before uh, from here we know that z alpha over 2 is 1.96 Uh, the margin of error is 0.05. Right, so that's what we have. One point nine six divided by zero point zero five square. We have two hundred sixty three point sixty eight. Round up to two hundred and sixty four people that we need to ask. Right, so you see, uh, the Z alpha over 2 and Z alpha over 2 in this case the same. So pretty much 95% confident interval on both problems. And um, margin of error will be the same on both problems. But if we know the P hat, then the number we have to ask will be less. So if we know the private in, uh, information, uh, the number we have to survey will be less than if we don't know it. Because when we don't know it, we have to assume the worst case uh, scenarios. And with that, we have to ask more people uh, to ensure that it is within the margin of error. Alright, uh, so with that, I stop uh, the video for this section here and see you in another video in statistics.
Thank you for watching.